Hey everybody, uh, I want to welcome you to this new software uh, called Macondo. Uh, this is something that I've been working on for many years. Uh, it's still kind of like in a beta mode. It's not the easiest thing to use, but I made this video to show you how you can use Macondo to analyze one of your Scrabble games. Without further ado, let's go to the uh, to the website here. So the website is domino14.github.io slash Macondo. I will put a link in the in the info for this video as well. You can just Click here how to install. You click on the URL that has the releases. So you will find the latest release and you will download the one that is correct for your operating system. We have Linux, uh, Mac OS X, and Windows. Um, so since I'm using Linux right now, I'm just going to download this. I can just install it like from scratch for you, with you guys. I download it, downloads to my downloads directory, and then I'll show it. I'm just gonna open it up and then uh, select these files I'm going to extract. So there's, there's different ways you can do this for your operating system. I think Windows and Mac will um, unzip automatically. Okay, so now it's extracted. So now this is the folder where it's at. And then on Windows or, or Mac or Linux, you can just do something, just open this file. Right now I'm going to open it with my terminal. Um, with Windows or Mac, you can just click on the file or double click it and it should automatically open. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see what it's like. So Macondo is just a uh, text program. There's no graphical interface, but I believe that this should be still usable. And I'll show you how you can use it to analyze a game. I'm going to analyze a game that I played uh, with John Karras in Vegas like a few years ago. For right now, let's set the lexicon to NWL18 because the lexicon we were using. If we go back here, download comes with a couple of lexicons. There's NWL20 and CSW21. If you want to use other lexicons, you can see there's a link in that GitHub page that shows you where you can find more KWG files. So let's go to this URL here. So you can download some more KWG files, that the ones that end in KWG for all their lexicons, like NWL18, and we even have like Catalan and um, French and etc. So these are just like the, the files that it needs to be able to do its move generation fast. Okay, so now we're going to do new. Let's let's download the file so I can show you how to add it. Click NWL18. We're going to do click here to download the raw file. And then it downloaded it. And then I'm going to copy it over to, to the directory. So I'm going to go here. Move it over here. Move here. I'm going to move this to the data directory. To the lexica okay and then to the gadag so when you see the gadag that's where your where your different gadags are okay so let's try that again then we're gonna over here we're gonna set the lexicon to nw18 we're gonna do new again okay so now everything is fine so you can change your people's names so you can say name uh, cesar uh, i think uh let's let's go to the to the actual game because i can find it on cross tables right now so john went first so say Name one, actually let's do a help. Help is gonna be a very useful thing. Help tells you all of the commands that you can that you can use. Help name, so name, the number, the nickname, and the full name. So we're gonna do name one, John, John Harris. Name two is gonna be Cesar. Okay, so this is the game. And then his first rack was fin, uh, chfin, so you're gonna do rack, that and then you're going to do something like gen you can gen to generate all the possible moves and if you want to commit that top move which is what he ended up playing 8d finch then you do commit number one to commit the top move another alternatively i'll show you another way of committing right now my, my next rack was rack b b f i n t v w um there's a few things i could do there you can commit, you can do something like commit, you know, 7C fib, for example. Or if you want to take that back, you do P to go to the previous uh, screen. And maybe you can generate more moves. Um, you don't actually need to generate the commit. You can commit exchange BTVW, for example. And again, like over here, it tells you what the last turn was. So that's our exchange BTVW. You can go back. I actually don't know what I played, so let's take a look and see what I actually did. So I exchanged BFVW, which is what is not quite this. So let's let's again let's generate the moves, and then let's do a sim. I'm gonna do sim. Let's do a help sim, so you can see. And there's a few options you can use for sim. The main options are just the number of plies. Um, I like simming with five plies because uh, I found that 
com uh, performs the best in all the, in the experiments that I've done. So let's simulate those moves with five plies. And this, was, this is going to start the simulation. And then every so often you can you can show the details. So you can do sim show. So right now it's already done 3,904 iterations. You can show the, the different moves here and shows you the win percentage, the equity. Um, so let's stop the sim. I think that should be enough iterations. 87, 82. You usually only need a couple thousand. And, it's, and you can see what the top moves are. So it, it looks like keeping TIN is the top move here. Sim details so you can see the actual details of what actually happens so if i exchange bfbw i have a win percentage of 30 my opponent's bingo percentage is 24.4 and then my next turn will be a bingo percentage of 38 my mean score will be 43 etc etc go out up to however number of plies that you selected so i can do s to show the the board again or just do show i'm oh, sorry i guess it's just s Okay, so this shows the board, and then we're going to commit exchange BFVW. Okay, so now John goes again, and his next rack was PGGY. So you do rack GGPY, you do generate, and you commit that top move. Um, my next rack was EIJLNTV. And then I'm, I'm down 58 to 0, so uh, let's see what I did jingle okay so you can you can generate uh, another thing you can do is you can do ai play instead of doing generate you do ai play and that'll play the top equity move it might not always be the right move so if, if it's not right then you just do p to go back to the last um screen and then actually type in the move that you play when you commit through a letter you you uh you just type in a period and then it for the letter that you're committing through or you can actually commit yeah, you do jingle like that. So let's let's skip ahead a little bit. Like we can we can go through the whole game like this, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. So since this game is on cross tables, I can show you that that um, you can just actually download the game so you can examine it yourself. Since the game is played in NWO18, you're gonna to need to tell it before you download it. So let's let's do unload to unload the game. And then you're gonna set the lexicon to NWO18. And then you're going to do load xt and then the game number okay so the game is here you can step through and see what happened it tells you all the plays at the bottom um there's a few interesting positions here that like i challenged off a play so let's let's go back here and see and see this position so john played squat hooking the s to hos um and that made a that makes a phony shos sho doesn't take an s so the next turn I have ADLSTU. So I can generate my plays. I can generate more plays. You can generate 40, you can generate 100, you know. But let's just do generate 15 plays. And then you can sim with this actual inference. Like you know that his rack is ASQUT. So you can do sim plies 5 opponent rack A ASQTU. And then you can do same show to see what the actual moves that you should make are so it still likes playing saluted notice that it doesn't like 11h two lotties very much 11h two lotties over here because it quads it would give them quads for like 50 something points 50 points so it doesn't like two lotties very much because of the of the inference without the inference they were probably similar a little bit closer so then you do same stop to stop and you continue you continue through the game by pressing N. So I'm just going 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 through it again. Um, at the end of the game, there was an interesting position here. So there's six tiles in the bag, which is 13 unseen total. And this is possibly his rack. I'm not ahead by that much. Um, I ended up making a play that might be kind of silly here, but let's let's generate a lot of plays. Now that now that there's 13 unseen, we can generate more plays, so we can like just look at more options. And we can sim out several plies. Now, since I'm up by 40 something, I'm unlikely to lose unless he bingos. So let's, we don't need to simulate too many plies ahead, but we can do like, let's say we do like eight plies or something, just, just for the heck of it. Which is a lot of plies. A lot of times it'll take it to the end of the game. And we can see what the best move could be. So it, it's going a little bit slower because 769 iterations. Notice that all my cores are working. This thing does a multi threaded simulation. 
So all my cores are very are very active right now. And then set a stop. And then we're gonna show the the winning plays here. C3 re1 seems to be sending a little bit higher than everything else. I ended up playing M1 Wooer, which um, it does win a lot, but you know it's a little bit surprising, I guess, like to to, to open up the the triple lane like that. It's, I, I thought it was unlikely for him to bingo out, like to bingo through a W, let alone a triple triple. But with a blank on scene, <laughs> you never know. One other thing that you can do to make the, the simulation stop faster, it would help sim. You can do a sim applies eight again, and let's do a stop. So you want to stop when you're ninety nine percent sure that the that the best play that it found is better than the next best play. So now now the simulation uh, ends a lot quicker. So if you look at the show again, it, it, it ended up cutting off a lot of plays. So it's really only between re one and wooer here. Everything else was cut off because it doesn't win enough. I, I can sim with an inference. Let's say that that my last his last play was b12 um, vow vau over here and with these beautiful letters let's give him some of these letters let's, let's pretend he kept ers so we're going to do a sim um applies five op rack it's going to be ers and we're going to stop when, when we're 99 percent sure that we have the right play so now that he has now that it's using an inference We'll look again, and we'll see that re1 is still the best play here, and actually by a little bit more than it was last time. So I probably made a little bit of a mistake there. So let's go ahead and look at the at the final at the final situation here. Okay, so now John has this rack. He doesn't actually have a bingo through the W, but um, what should he do, right? So when there's one tile unseen to him. Um, you can actually solve the end game and, and the pre-end games exhaustively. So one in the bag pre-end game can be solved like perfectly. And in order to do that, you do help PEG. And depending on how complicated it is, it can take a few minutes, especially if you have a slow computer. But let's help it out a little bit. We know that, that he probably needs a bingo to win. So we don't need to look ahead too far like in the end game. We only need to look ahead like three or four plays. We can do a cutoff early so we don't examine it like exhaustively. Um, we can skip pass, which means like, like from his perspective, passing is not going to win this game because I can just probably score a lot through the W and then just outrun any, anything that he does. We just play bled or anything. So we're gonna pretend just to make it for, to make it uh, simple that we're gonna use a few of these options. So we're gonna do peg, we're gonna skip pass, true, we're going to do an early cutoff so it just like like cuts off plays that can't possibly win and we're going to use uh no the, it'll use the maximum number of threads we're going to say that the end game plies is like three just to make it end faster so now what this does is it's actually solving every possible like it, it generates every possible play that john could make here and it plays out the end games um as many plies as you tell it to play and after a few minutes or a few seconds, depending on how complicated the, the pre-end game is, it will uh, give you some results. So while we're waiting for that, uh, let's, uh, let's step through the game here and show you what ended up happening. So I played War, he ended up bingoing, and then I can just play out and then he doesn't have enough, right? So that was my hope that I could just outrun stuff by playing War, but um, oh, uh, Re1 was probably the best play. We can go back here and um, okay so now it found 10 plays that were tied for first from his perspective so it's tie breaking between them it's going to tell you which of those plays like scores the most from his perspective let's let it go a few more seconds so overall like it didn't take too long like once you give it some some good options it doesn't take too long so here it took 11.07.22 to 11.08.32 so it took about a, a minute a minute and 10 seconds it turns out that him playing off the e in a variety of different places is the best play from his perspective he can draw the the d and then end up winning the game so that was a blunder for me to play war because i, I gave him some possible wins and you know we can uh, step through much of the of the of the game and how it would have been in other situations but um, from his perspective, he probably should have fished off an E and then hoped to draw the D to, to win. If he plays off the E in any of these situations, 12J E, for example, 
he plays off age here for eight points and he draws the d then he ends up getting a high scoring bingo in a couple of spots and then i can't i can't win anymore so um we can actually play that out so let's pretend that he ended up playing the e so commit 12 j h and now let's pretend that he drew the the d so now our, our rack would then be would have to be um that so now this is his rack this is my rack so do i have a win here i actually don't you can figure that out by doing end game so you can do help end game end game you do plies and you can just go up like four or five plies like plies are how many turns each of you gets so for this, you, all, you, all you care about is a bingo. So you, you only need like three plies, but you could do more if you want to. And you can do threads uh, six. Because if you use the most threads for your, for your computer, it solves the end game faster. Um, the most you can use right now is six before you start getting some diminishing returns. So we're still playing around with that. So the final spread after this sequence, like with my move here, my move here is gonna be burl vertically from one H. And then he is going to bingo out with tetrads and then win by six points. So the final spread, from my perspective, is negative six. So I can't win this game. I can't really block the bingo. Like if I do like commit C2 Berlin, for example, then he has bad straw to the W. So that easily wins for him. Um, so let's go back a, a couple of turns and then see. There was one interesting situation here. He, scroll up a bit and see that if he plays off like an O, a blank O, there's a lowercase O, at one L, he will tie the game with a B draw. So let's see what happens there. <laughs> that's a really funny one. I don't know what's happening there, but let's see if that's actually the case. Commit one L, blank O. So he plays OW for four points. He will tie with a B draw. So. Let's give ourselves that rack. So he has bestower as a as a triple triple. So obviously I'm gonna to want to block that, but then he has B rates. So let's let's work out the math here. So um, we do end game plus four thread six, whatever, and then to solve the end game from my perspective. So you can see that it actually found the tie properly. Like this ends up being a tie. So commit H1 Arid and then commit. His best move is going to be just one of these bingos. And when you're done with the game, you, you got to remember to commit a pass. Okay. So let's pretend that the game ended. So it was a 356 to 356 tie after this crazy sequence for him. When you want to export the game, you do export. Let's, let's do a help again. Because I don't even remember the, the, the commands. Oh, there's no help for the topic export. Okay. Let's do an export. Um, versus john that gcg okay so now we can quit out of my condo if you want to open it again the game was actually saved here next to your to your macondo executable if we open it up we can load the game from the gcg file and you can take this gcg and like upload it to cross tables and do whatever so okay, so here's the game let's go to turn 20 which is towards the end of the game you do it next a few times and here's my modified version of this game where he played a blank O and then ended up tying the game in an awesome sequence. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to uh, upload this. I'm going to put this on, on YouTube and we're going to link to this uh, tutorial in the actual Macondo page so you can watch it at any time. Um, there's a lot more things you can do with Macondo, but I've gone through really most of the main uh, features of it. Oh, here's the export command, by the way. So if you do help... Um, it shows you how to export a game. You can even autoplay, have the computers play themselves. You can check words, you can evaluate leaves, you know, check foo, the word foo is valid. Um, evaluate leaves, you can leave foo, and it's worth negative 7.968. So anyway, that's the kind of stuff that you can do with Macondo. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoy using the program.